Let's take a closer look and let's learn how to work with streams. Remember how I said the difference between a buffer and a stream is a buffer has a defined beginning and an end, whereas a stream really doesn't. Not a thousand percent accurate. Streams actually have a starting point. They do have an ending point, but that ending point is basically when you decide to stop reading them. Let's take a closer look. We're going to include a few things here. Cue debug. Now the problem with a broad statement like that is someone somewhere out there is going to quote something they found on Google and say, well, you're not accurate. This is what it really is. And the problem fundamentally is depending on which site you're reading, you're going to get different information. I've even found conflicting information on the same website. Won't name names, but uh, you know who you are. All right, so we've uh, got QDebug, QDataStream, that's a new one, QFile, QDir. We're going to also include QFile info And we're going to include QRandomGenerator. Not sure if we're going to use all those, but let's just wing it and see what happens here. So there's key random generator, and we're going to say bool, create file, similar design pattern to what we've been using. That way it's very familiar. We're going to say QIO device, and we want write only. You may be wondering, why are we using write only and not append? It's because I want to make sure that we have reliable data every single time. Where if we have append, it's just going to keep growing and growing and growing every time we run this application. Give some sort of feedback in case there was a problem and return false because there was a problem. All right, once we verify that we can actually open the file up, first thing we want to make sure that we do is, well, you guessed it, close the file. Now, we got the file open. Let's go ahead and write some data to it. So we're going to say QDataStream. And let's call this stream. We're going to give it a reference to our file. You may be wondering, why are we doing this? We can write directly to the file. Well, what the QDataStream is going to do is allow us to stream data into the file instead of writing it in blocks. It's actually super handy and it's really efficient. But So we're going to say max thousand, QString, and let's call this banner. going to write random numbers and we're going to write our banner out so let's say qinfo don't really need to do this but just so we have some sort of visual representation on the screen that we're actually going to do something now we're going to say stream and we're going to shift that data into it there we go. So now we have just written out to that stream. Now let's make some random numbers here. Four and i equals zero. I minus five. And we're going to increment this and let's just say i plus plus. So at least five times we're going to write out a random number. Want a qint32? Let's call this num. And we're going to get a bounded number. Now, if you remember from the previous examples, what we're really doing here is what we're really doing here is we're calling a singleton pattern off the QRandom generator, meaning we're getting the global instance of that class and bounded meaning it's going to take a minimum or a maximum we want the upper limit to equal max in this case 1000 so not super super important that you really understand all those concepts because we're going to cover them but i wanted you to really under understand at a very 
rudimentary level what we're doing there. Basically, we're just generating a random number with a maximum of 1,000. And we're going to write that number out. Now you'll notice something right off the bat. We're writing two different data types. We're writing a string and we're writing a number. Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and fill some of this out. This is a really good example of it doesn't matter what the file name is, it matters the data you write to it, whether it's text or not text. Just going to add that in there so we can tell exactly what we're doing here. So if create file, then we're going to actually write it out. Or if create file, then we're going to do something, which is in this case, we're going to read it back. So let's go ahead and do this. Now, in a lot of uh, production-based applications, you'll see people will not break things out into actual functions like this, and they'll get some really weird error messages, and they can't figure out for the life of them what's going on. And that's why I kind of break things out into functions. A little bit longer, a little bit more coding, but it's a lot safer in the long run. All right, so now we've got our file open. We're going to say queue data stream, and give it a reference to our file. Another thing you may notice is that uh, we're not opening and closing the stream. We're opening and closing the file, but not the actual stream. That's what I meant by a stream really doesn't have a begin or end. You kind of decide where you start and stop. Meaning we could have read and write things to and from that file long before we opened that data stream. All right, so let's go ahead and make a queue string. Let's call this banner so we don't get confused. Notice we're not assigning that, and we're going to say stream. And we're going to read from that stream. Very, very similar to working with the standard input and output. It's actually by design. It's a very elegant design, and I personally love it. And let's say Q info. And let's just Q info out that banner. And let's just for the sake of typing out yet another for loop, let's grab this and let's get rid of that. We're going to grab a qint32, we're going to call it num. Notice we're not assigning that because we're going to read that from the stream. So if you're really paying attention to what's going on here, we open the file, we open the stream by giving it a reference to the file, then we're going to read in a variable. That's a queue string. Then we're going to read in five variables that are qint32s, or integers basically. Save this and let's run it. Fingers crossed. All right, so we wrote, 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 and then we read. And you can see, sure enough, we got them back. So this is a string we can tell by the quotes. And then we've got integers. That's pretty slick. Let's go ahead and take a look at the actual file's content. See how it's a .txt. But when we look at it, let's pull this over, you can see that, oh, suddenly, magically, this is not plain text. 
and it says there was a problem. There actually wasn't a problem. You can click this all day long. And it's looking for a character encoding. It doesn't really matter because this is no longer plain text. This is a data stream. QDataStream under the hood is chosen in encoding and pumped it out to the file itself. Encoding is something we're going to cover soon, but basically you just take the data and put it in a guaranteed format. That's what I mean by it doesn't really matter. This is a .txt, but we don't have plain text information in it. Just understand the fundamental difference there. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of a video series I have out on udemy.com. This particular video is a follow-on in the intermediate course, but you can start in Qt Core for beginners. And if we just kind of crack this open, it's got a lot of content that'll take you from an absolute beginner that just knows absolutely nothing from hello world all the way up to what are templates, generics, error handling, and classes. This specific video is part of the Qt Core intermediate class. This picks right up where the beginner's course left off, and we do things like memory management, collections, working with settings, the file system, a lot of file system, compression, serialization, and much, much more.